Hey folks, welcome to another Top 10 with yours truly, Sam Healy. I am all by my lonesome today, but that's okay. I'm sharing my Top 10 games that I played at Gen Con. I only played, as a matter of fact, from my memory at least, 10 games. So these are the 10 games that I played at Gen Con, <laughs> which just also happened to be my Top 10 because they're my only 10. We're going to talk about them in order from least enjoyed to most enjoyed. And sometimes that is determined by the experience of the people that I'm playing the game with more than the actual game itself. Do take this list with a grain of salt. I did try to be a little bit more academic about it, but just keep in mind, these are my 10 games that I played at Gen Con from least enjoyed to most enjoyed. Let's hit it. Number 10 was my least enjoyed game, and that is Fairy. Now, Fairy is a game that isn't a bad game. Don't get me wrong. I think it's a well-designed, party-esque type of game that people are going to enjoy and people are going to have a lot of fun with. It's just not for me. While I didn't dislike the experience because I totally enjoyed the experience of the people I was playing games with. Uh, I enjoyed the interactions between uh, me and them, but the game just kind of fell flat for me. So basically in Fairy, you are you have a scorecard in your hand, first of all, that you have to hold between your uh, pointer finger and your thumb. And where your thumb is, is that's how you keep track of your points. Your other hand, you're going to be playing the game with. There's a deck of cards with the uh, numbers in them. And uh, one of the cards starts turned over, so we know what that card is. And now before they turn over the next card, we have to determine, is it going to be higher? Is it going to be lower? Is it going to be a fairy? Or, and I can't remember the hand motion for this, but is it going to be the same color? That's all you're doing. You're just trying to guess what the next card is going to be. And if you guess properly, then you get points. And if you guess improperly, you lose a point. Uh, and uh, the other things that you can guess, you get a variable number of positive points. And uh, you, you go through the deck, and at the end of the deck, whoever has the most points is the winner. It's not a bad game, don't get me wrong. I just didn't really enjoy it that much. I wanted to play something else, but this is what everybody wanted to play. So that's what we did. That's my number 10, Fairy. My number 9 is a game called Flip 7. Uh, now, Flip 7 is not a bad game. Again, I have to I think I'm going to provide that caveat with all of the experiences that I didn't enjoy. Uh, it's not a bad game, uh, but it's just not my kind of game. It's, it's a push your luck game where you are top decking cards and you're trying to get seven cards in your tableau. And if you do that, well, you end the round and you get to score all of your points. Um, but if while you're flipping over cards, it's kind of played blackjack style where a dealer is going to basically come to you and say, hey, do you want another card? And you have to say yes or no. Uh, if you say yes, they're going to put another card in front of you. And if that numbered card matches any of the ones that you already have in front of you, you're bust and you don't score any points that round. But if it isn't matching one of the other numbers that are in front of you, then you get to continue on when it comes back around to you. And you're simply going to be scoring points uh, at the end of the round equal to the number value of all of the cards that are in front of you. There are some cards that are in there that do different things, like you can make somebody else freeze, which basically means you stop. Uh, you, can, uh, you, you can make somebody else have to draw three cards in a row. They don't have a choice to say, no, I don't want any more. Uh, you can uh, have a second chance card that you can keep. So if you bust, you can throw that card away and keep going if you wish. Uh, so that's basically all the game is. It's not, it's not bad. I just didn't enjoy it. But the game is what I didn't enjoy. The experience around the table was hilarious. I loved playing uh, the game with Joey. And uh, I think Mark Street was there. Anna was there. And um, a gentleman from San Antonio was sitting right next to me. So there are a number of different reasons why I enjoyed the experience. The game just wasn't one of them. But that's just me. Go try it and see what you think. Now, 8 through 1 is going to be experiences that I enjoyed both for the reason of 
the people I was playing it with, and for the game itself. Uh, so there you have that. Number eight was a game that was a prototype called, I believe, Leaping Lily Pads, or something to that effect. And generally speaking, what you have here is a hexagonal board that has a whole bunch of lily pads all over it. You have your team of frogs in your player color on your side or a corner of the board, and everybody else has theirs on their corners of the board. We were playing with three frogs each. I think the number of frogs you start with is determined by how many players are in the game. But uh, what you're basically trying to do is you're going to be taking one of your frogs on your turn and moving it as far as you want to in a straight line. Where it started from, that lily pad comes off the board. And if it lands next to a, uh, another frog or a, or a group of frogs, then those frogs are pushed away from that center spot where, the, where your frog landed uh, by one space. And if they are pushed off into the water, then that frog is out of the game, basically. And you're just trying to have your team of frogs be the last ones standing. It's an abstract strategy game where you're just basically moving frogs in straight lines around the board, trying to outthink your opponents. But man, was it a fun time. I'm usually not an abstract strategy game player, but this one was fun. And I think, at least in part, that was due to the people who were playing the game, the trash talking that was going on around the table, and all of that kind of stuff. All of the things that make playing games fun. And so I really enjoyed this. It is a prototype. That is why we don't actually have a picture of the game here. But, uh, and of course, I didn't take a picture of the game because I'm a, a moron that way. But uh, I really enjoyed this experience called Leaping Lily Pads. I hope it gets picked up. My number seven is also a uh, prototype. Um, uh, it's uh, designed by my, my friend Jack Dunbar. Uh, he lives over in Spokane and uh, he's the one that made uh, New Kingdom Sowers and New Kingdom Gardeners and uh, which have uh, both been games that I've enjoyed so I was interested in trying out one of his prototypes called Tribulation. And Tribulation is a, uh, uh, a one to two player game where you are uh, going against one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And uh, you, as the player, can choose from an angel uh, or a saint that is going to be uh, trying to resist the powers of the uh, one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. So there's basically four different scenarios. Each horseman of the apocalypse is going to be trying to accomplish a different goal. And um, depending on which of them you are playing against, that determines what you're trying to stop them from doing. I just thought it was a really fun game. Uh, there is some area movement, uh, there's some uh, attacking and combos and that type of thing, uh, but it's all card play and movement on a hexagonal board. Uh, we all really enjoy the game, myself, uh, Luke, Matt, Bubba, um, and a couple of the gentlemen that were at the table that night played the game and, and we all had a good time with it. My number six is a game called Chicken! with an exclamation mark. And this is a dice game that you're basically just rolling uh, a number of dice. Um, you, you, you start with four dice. And if you roll chickens, then that's gonna score you points. If you roll eggs, you get to add more dice to your pool and you always get one re-roll on your turn. And you're basically just trying to score points by rolling chicken heads. Uh, but if you roll fox heads, uh, if you roll three fox heads, as a matter of fact, that makes you bust and you don't score any points that turn. Uh, and you you pass the dice to the next player and now they get to, to try to roll dice. Uh, and it's a race to 25 points. I've played this before at Grand Con last year uh, with the uh, LTN guys. And this one I played at uh, Family Time Games, uh, just north of Indianapolis. And uh, we were playing with Anna... Uh, Mark Street, uh, let's see, Z Garcia was there, Camilla was there, I was there, my friend from uh, San Antonio whose name I can't remember. It was the uh, five of us at first, Camilla joined afterwards, so there were six of us playing the game, and we just really had a great time playing the game, you're, where you're just rolling dice. It's really just a fun party 
type game, but it's got interesting decisions that you have to make uh, throughout the course of it. It doesn't go the route of Yahtzee dice rolling where you get two re-rolls. You only get one re-roll. Uh, and you're just simply trying to score as many points as you can without rolling fo three fox heads in one turn. I think it's a fun game. I also like the fact that it's a race to 25 points So because it doesn't last forever, uh, and that's a good thing as well. Uh, it's a fun party game that uh, where you just roll dice and... It could overstay its welcome, but it doesn't. It's really an enjoyable experience. That was my number six, chicken, with an exclamation mark. My number five was a game that has just recently been published, uh, and it's called Prestige, the city building game. This one was, uh, again, another one that has just been uh, funded, rather, not necessarily published, and it's, I don't believe it's available on retail yet, but it's going to be soon. And it's, an, it's a neat little semi-cooperative city building game because everybody has cards in their hand that represent different districts in a city, and you're trying to uh, play your cards into the city, and you're all cooperatively doing that. Um, but you're trying to do so in such a way where your faction uh, has the most of their districts in the city at the end of the game. So there is only going to be one winner once the game ending conditions are met, but you are cooperatively working towards that goal. It's a really interesting uh, situation uh, to build a game around where you're all building a city together and you do want the city to grow and you do want to uh, score points and, and do all of this kind of thing cooperatively. But at the end of the game, there can only be one winner. I really enjoyed myself. It was a neat um, city building experience. I like city building games, generally speaking, and this one didn't disappoint. So that's Prestige, the city building game. My number four is a from Arcane Wonders. It's called Mezzan. And this one piqued my interest when it was uh, being uh, talked about on the BGG lists for Origins and for Gen Con. I was able to demo it at Origins. And then here at Gen Con, they actually had copies for purchase, and they also had neoprene mats for pur purchase that go along with it. Uh, so that's a cool thing. I bought both of those. And uh, that night after I purchased them, we were back up in the JW Marriott on the third floor there, and uh, I pulled it out. We played a five-player game of it. And I think... Everybody enjoyed the game. Some of them told us that, uh, told me that, you know, it's not really their kind of game, but they didn't not enjoy it. So uh, that was a cool thing. I enjoy it. It's kind of a spatial organization game where at the beginning of your turn, the, the lead player gets to choose a symbol in your, uh, in their grid, actually everyone's grid, that uh, is to be removed from the board. But the caveat is, is that you can pick just one group of that uh, symbol, whatever it might be, that is adjacent to each other, including one that is just by itself. You could choose that as a group if you didn't want to mess up your grid too much. And then there are 10 different scoring cards throughout the course of the game, five in the first half and five in the second half, uh, with some special scoring in the middle and at the end. And uh, you're just trying to uh, get your, uh, your symbols in different kinds of uh, arrangements to score on these different goal cards. It's really an interesting game. It's not one that uh, I would normally gravitate towards, so it is kind of strange that I was pulled toward this game. I'm usually much more of an aesthetic type of gamer, and uh, this one just basically has three colors, red, black, and white. But the starkness of the design is what kind of uh, uh, brought it to the front for me. So I really have enjoyed this game. I'm going to be playing it more here, recent, here in the next few weeks. And we'll have a review coming up pretty soon over on the flip side. So go check that out. That was my number four, Mezzan. My number three is a game from Devere, and it's their new one, The Hotness, that sold out before I could get to it, and that is Cities. Uh, Jess saw this being played a lot at Dice Tower East, and she said it really looked like something she wanted to try out, so I did want to try to get a copy, but I didn't get there in time, as it were, but I did get to uh, play somebody else's copy of it. Jim Pridgen, a good friend of mine, was able to purchase it, and um, he taught us how to play. 
and we really had a good time at this. It was a not it's it's not so much of an interactive game, but you are building your city, and there are different cities that you can uh, play with that will give different public goals that everybody's trying to shoot for. So that's a cool thing about it. But you basically go through almost everything that's in the game every single time you play it, except for the actual building pieces, which are cool. Um, but uh, you don't use all of those, but you use all of the other cards, you use all of the other tiles. So it's just a matter of uh, how those tiles come out uh, as to how different each game is going to play. But as it were, I really enjoyed my play of this. I think it's a very neat city building, city building game. And I do think that it's, it's cool that um, uh, the, the different cities provide the different sets of public goals. I think that was a cool little neat twist there. But uh, that is my number three, Cities from Devere. My number two is definitely an old favorite of mine, uh, but this is a revamped old favorite, and that is Bang Dice Explosion. Now, when I heard that Dice Explosion was coming out, I gave away my uh, old copy of Bang the Dice game, and I did have all of the expansions, but Bang the Dice Explosion uh, has the base game, all of the expansions, and four new characters. So uh, I replaced my older very well used copy of Bang the Dice Game with Dice Explosion. And uh, we were able to play it once at, uh, you know, Roy and I uh, got a few people together while we were at Family Time Games uh, for the Dice Tower Kickstarter event. And we were able to play it. And it just reminded me how much I really enjoy this game. So much fun table talking, so much fun trying to figure out uh, who the other roles are in the game so we really enjoyed this we had a great time playing it i've talked to about it ad nauseum on this channel i know so you know i like this game it was my second favorite experience though my most favorite experience out of the out of the entire convention is a little bit of a cheat but i i was part of Around 25 games of this game, and I really enjoyed myself. It made the entire weekend uh, a blast, and that is The Art Project by The Op. Um, I already knew I liked this game when I knew that The Op was going to be my assignment and that The Art Project was going to be one of those games that were uh, being demoed. I actually requested to do the art project because I enjoy it so much and because I think it's such a, it's it's that great of a game. So that is what I've uh that's my number one experience. It's the one that I played the most. Technically I only played it once, but I was part of 20 about 25 different games as I was leading those demos and I really had a great time. So I want to say that I'm not trying to be cheeky. Um, I just, this is the one game that I had the most experience this weekend with. And um, of all the people that I played with, I don't think I came across one person that uh, was coarse or sour or anything like that. Everybody had a great time. Everybody was, were, were, having you know, were, were being great players and uh, it was just a very enjoyable experience the art project over the course of the entire weekend so it had to be my number one uh, but that is my top 10 games that i played or maybe if you want to have it top 10 gaming experiences at gen con uh, maybe that might be a better title for this we'll see what i put on the thumbnail thanks for joining me folks we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side Take care.